Hi, today I'd like to go over how I painted this kitten. Um, normally when I paint them, I follow a slightly different process, so I thought that documenting this process might be kind of interesting. This time I took more of a sculptural or painterly approach, and so I thought it might be interesting to just go back and see how it turned out, and just kind of the process that went along with it. It's not the fastest way to do something, but it was definitely one of the more fun ways. One of the benefits of painting this way is you don't the entire time need to have a photorealistic reference and then you kind of get a more stylized approach. So the first thing I did was I just did this general drawing and I put it on a black background just looking at several kittens and I didn't spend too much time trying to make it too perfect. I just wanted to give it a general fluffy kitten vibe and I figured that I would paint in any changes that I wanted as I went. So I grabbed a textured brush. I think this one might have been like a pastel or a crayon brush in Clip Studio Paint. Um, I've been doing my paintings lately in Clip Studio Paint because I'm just enjoying some of the tools that they have. So just very very roughly right now on on a separate layer from the drawing and a separate layer from the gray background I'm just kind of blocking in the shapes of where I want the stripes and kind of the direction of the fur when you're painting animals I think especially it's very important to have fur direction figured out you could either look at a picture of a cat or whatever animal or if you've just been around them long enough you kind of know the general direction their fur goes but I think that's a very important first step then what I'm doing now is I'm going through and I'm blocking in some colors for the fur because when you're painting, this is a black and white kitten or a silver kitten, and when you're painting something that's black and white or silver in an animal, it's usually not directly black, directly white, directly silver. And so I'm actually painting him in various shades of gray that I'm starting to slightly saturate with different colors. So if you look, it's very, everything's very muted, very mid-tone. I'm just picking colors that all kind of match in that gray area. I'm really sticking to that quadrant. If you look where my picker is when I'm picking the colors, they're all up in that gray area. I'm just switching between colors and I'm mostly going, you know, from warm to cool. So I'll pick a blue for a while and then I'll turn it back and go to an orange. And I'm just going back and I'm reinforcing the fur direction and I'm also just putting in colors where I, right now it's mostly where I feel like they should go. It's not anything too specific because all this is going to be painted over. So I'm imagining that there is going to be cool light, maybe a little bit of like indirect cool light coming from behind and maybe like a soft warm light in front. So going to try to do the cool more on the edges and the warm colors more you know front and center but it's nothing right now that's too firm so like literally I'll throw a pink in there I'll throw a purple you know but nothing too strong not a race for sure when you're doing it this way you know I'll go back and I'll start lightening it up a little but not too much everything's pretty much mid-tones I might right, right here I'm starting to brighten it up a little bit but every time I start to add a light color like this then you'll notice I'll go back in and I'll add a dark color because I think to get an overall good look what you're gonna need to do is really just go back between warms and cools lights and darks and not focus on any one area too long. Both, I wouldn't want to zoom in and focus on like the paw or the mouth for too long at this stage, but I also wouldn't want to focus on one set of colors for too long either. I wouldn't want to just go in and only shade the darks the entire time and then go in and do the lights. Just like I wouldn't want to, you know, go in and just draw the fur in one particular spot. I want to make everything just kind of even and sit together nice as a composition. So I just went in and I darkened a bunch of things. I'm darkening the stripes and I'm reinforcing some of the shadows. And so probably what I'll do right after this is I'm going to go in and I'm going to lighten things 
kind of balance it back out because I don't want to stray too far from the initial grays and colors right now. See, so yeah, and I just switched to a warmer dark. It's still a dark, but I'm just reinforcing some of the front shadows with that. Like the before, it was a cooler color, and then here I just went in with a light C, and I'm kind of trying to balance it back out, and I'm bringing back out some of the highlights. But I'm not going directly to white, and you don't want to go directly as light as you can or as dark as you can. I did put some pretty dark darks to get the stripes down because there's some contrast to this kitten's fur, but you don't want to focus too heavily on any one color or any one tone or any one area. Just want to, you know, get it nice painterly feel, just really loose. And also, if you notice, I'm not zooming in too far. It's not meant to be focused yet. It's very broad. I haven't even done the details of the eyes or the mouth. Just going in light and dark, cool and warm. And so right here, I'm just kind of popping out some of the blues because I think I really do want that blue backlight to show up. So you can see like on the edge of his back and of his arms, there's a bit of blue behind him. And I think right here, what I'm doing is I noticed when I made him transparent that he was still very transparent. So I'm actually just cutting out this background. I'm going to merge him with the background and then give him a new background so that he is a more solid piece and I can change the background out later. Because it's important for me too to be able to flip flop between backgrounds and make sure the colors are working, not just in this gray tone, but in whites and blacks. I'm just going and shading the tails and I'm doing all this right now in the painting layer. Eventually I will be, or the normal layer, I'm just painting um, with I believe the airbrush tool right now. I haven't even gotten to the actual fur yet. I'm just going in the direction, you know, I'm just, I'm just getting the tones and the lights and the shadows and I haven't even started worrying about any of the details yet. This is still a very, very broad drawing. Um, now I'm starting to just, just barely block in his nose there. And now I'm starting to actually paint with the paint brushes. And what I like about the oil brushes in Clip Studio Paint is I just think they blend really nice. And I feel like it's more of a way that I can feel like I'm painting. And so the one that I grabbed right now, it's like a solid multiple lines. And I'm just using that to really push that fur direction as like a template for me later. I'm just kind of blocking in some of the background colors that are behind it. And I'm just getting a good direction and sense of the fur. But I'm not going to keep using this brush the whole time because I feel like it's very, a very hard brush. So just going in, kind of trying to, you know, clean up a tiny bit, but not too detailed, just where the fur goes. Again, reinforcing the shadows. If you work in grays like this, you just go back and forth. You don't do anything too spontaneous. You just slowly, gradually build up the shadows, build up the light, build up the shadows, build up the light. Just kind of work your way out from gray to out. And so here I've switched over to a much softer oil brush. And this one also has multiple um, lines. And that way I can get more fur at once. But see, I'm having to mess with the settings here because I don't want it to blend too much, but I definitely want to give it a little bit more of a blended property. The nice thing about Clip Studio Paint is when you're painting, it actually will blend your painting color with the background color. And there's only a certain amount, like actual paint, there's a certain amount that your color will spread. And so sometimes to fix that, like now I've, I've opened up a new layer and I'm not even painting on my initial painting layer, I'm painting on a new layer. And I'll go back and forth and I'll do that a lot. What that allows me to do gives me a more saturated look with the colors that I'm choosing and allows me to not bl blend or interfere or muddy up the background layer. And so I can paint on this new layer and get the new patterns and colors down. And if they're too strong, I'm not afraid to mess with the opacity. So you'll also see me flipping it on and off back and forth and seeing if it works with the below layer and if it looked better before and if I need to reduce the opacity or start over completely. 
And generally what I'll do is I'll just work on this new layer and just kind of work until it looks how I'm kind of feeling it should. And then see here, I flick it on and off, make sure it's working. And eventually I'll just go ahead and completely merge it and start fresh when things start to get too muddied. You know, you work in a region too long with the blending brush and it'll really start to kind of muddy up. So you just, it's the same thing as with the physical painting. You just, you know, let that painting dry a little bit before you continue working. But in this case, you just open up a new layer and you're just working with fresh paint on the new layer. So now I'm really starting to pop in some of the brighter colors. I put in, these are really cool tones. I want to make sure that, especially on some of the planes of his head, that you're getting some of that cool light coming from the back and side. Um, so the thing about like the kitten's head is it's an oval, but he's got a lot of different surfaces. So it's important to understand in three dimensions kind of where your surfaces are pointing if you want to paint like this, because that helps you determine where to put the color. And so that's why the very top of his head has a bit of a cooler light, because I'm imagining that the surfaces are kind of pointing out in the direction that the cooler light's coming from. Or the front of his head is pointing in the direction of the softer warm light. And so the front of his head and the front of his chest and the front of his feet are going to have a lot more warm light than the sides of him. But I also want to make sure that I'm getting the shadows, you know, that are because he's a three-dimensional form, and so as the the light, the warm light in the front is tapering off, he's still going to have shadows off to the side of him. And then, because I did all those light layers, now I'm going and reinforcing the shadows again. You know, I'm still working in grays. It's The most black is in his stripes, and, you know, sometimes I'll put a little bit too dark, like, see, I went too dark on his nose, and I'll have to go back and I'll fix that. And then balancing it out, I'm going back in and I'm putting some of the cool light back on the sides. I believe I went back and ended up changing the opacity on this a little bit. Getting the warm light to balance out the cool light. It's all just slowly building it up, kind of like it's clay, just working all around the entire piece. There, I'm figured out the opacity I liked, just double checking it, and then I merged them together, and then I started a new layer, and I'm just starting over again, I'm refining the feet, refining some of the edges, just trying to kind of clean things up, just, I'm cleaning slowly, I'm going from a bigger brush, and I'm slowly shrinking my brush, and I'm just slowly starting to refine, nothing no no huge changes, no hyper-focused areas. I'm really just going from oh, general to specific. And here, I decided I really didn't like the shape of his head. It was a rough drawing. I wanted to make the ears match in size a little more. So I'm actually using that mesh transform tool. Uh, it works pretty nice in Clip Studio Paint, but there's also one in Photoshop. So I just went, I just kind of adjusted my drawing before I got too far because you don't want to do it at the end. You want to do it while you're still painting so that the lines and the fur all go in the correct direction. So still kind of in the middle of the piece so it's a good time right now to go ahead and adjust it before I keep adding more layers of paint. See, I'm starting to define the face a little bit, but still not overly specific. Just going in. And it's important to get the shapes from broad to specific in this type of painting in the way I'm doing it right now. I'm just focused on the overall, and there's not a real kitten that exists as a reference, so it's easy to get off track and get really focused on a small area. So I'm just trying to keep it pretty broad just treating it like I'm sculpting or like I'm actually painting with oils and I'm just going just kind of slowly at my own pace just having fun with it I'm getting those shadows in the entire arm because that arm is three-dimensional and so the light would taper off on the side of the arm from that front 
light. So I'm starting to, both in the spots and in the in the front of the arm, I'm starting to add a little shadow. And I keep going in and cleaning up those spots, and that's because I keep messing with them as I go through when I get the fur around them. Don't want to, you know, get too attached to any of your lines early on because you're going to paint over them if you're doing it this way. Really just trying to get kind of an illustrative, you know, stylized drawing this time. I'm not going for a specific realism or anything like that. So I can take my time. Adding a little bit of a cool purplish pink in there. Just kind of see how it looks, kind of make sure it's a little bit on the edges where the light might be kind of reflecting or you get some secondary bounce from maybe the floor or the other parts of the fur, you know, merging and just checking everything. And these, I believe these are all still normal layers. I'm still working just like I'm painting. Um, eventually I'll start doing some like multiply layers for shadows and things and that'll really pop it. But for now, it's all just painting. It's just normal layers, changing the opacity, changing the tones. Getting it how I like it. So here I'm starting to actually block in the face and the mouth a little bit. And one thing with a lot of animals, especially with lighter or thinner fur um, around their mouth, you'll see a little bit of the skin tone peeking through. So that's why there's a little bit of pink there, both because there should be kind of a shadow just because that part of his face would indent a little, but also because you would see a little bit of the underlying skin. So he's got a little bit of pink by his lips and a little bit of pink under his nose. And I'll just blend that with the fur color. And then I'm trying to focus on the nose as a three-dimensional shape. So usually with a cat nose, there's a line down the center, but you don't want it like a strong line on him. So just kind of trying to work it in with some light and some shadow. You know, I'm still not focused too much on making anything perfect, including the nose and the mouth. It's just to block it in. Starting to zoom in a little bit. And Make sure it works with the face. You don't want to do it so late that it just doesn't fit with the face. And you'll notice too, I turn back on my line work and that way I'm starting to block out the shape of the eyes. Now they're on their completely own layer. I'm just doing the blacks of the eyes completely by themselves on a layer and don't be afraid to go ahead and transform and move it. Now on its own layer on top of the blacks, I did the highlights because the eyes would have like a clear dome over them and the light would reflect. So I went ahead and I did that. And then behind everything on a completely other layer, I'm doing the color. And kittens usually have blue eyes, but this cat, maybe he's starting to get a little bit of green in his eyes, but he's still got his baby blues. So I'm just kind of colors in their own layer, blacks in their own layer highlights in their own layer. And by doing it that way you can really go ahead and I can just blend the colors. And I was working in the brush tool but I went to the crayon so I could give it more of a you know splotchy. I don't want to make the eyes too airbrushed or painterly. I want to give them their own texture because they're going to be behind that light. So, And it it does help to look at animals' actual eyes or kittens' actual eyes while you're painting something like this, just until you get the hang of it to see the direction and the light. And see so here, I'm going ahead and I'm just kind of, you know, cleaning things up, transforming things, making sure when I zoom back out that they're pointing at the same direction. I feel like eyes are very important because when people look at your painting, they do look at your eyes. People make eye contact and I believe even with an animal or a painting, they're going to be looking at the eyes. So it's important to kind of make them believable, you know, a little bit three-dimensional and at least pointing in the same direction. So don't be afraid to go ahead and transform that layer. You know, you can paint everything, but at the end of the day, if you're working digitally, you have the tools to fix it. So do. So I think for those, they're generally, they were in the shape that I kind of wanted. So I went ahead and just started going back to the fur. And 
And so here I'm turning the layer from color to black and white. And doing that allows me to really see the tones and the contrast. And see here I'm adjusting the ear because I'm still not happy with that ear. Um, but you really need to be able to focus on the tones too. And so switching your painting once in a while back to uh, black and white or grayscale really helps you to see the lights and the darks. You want to have, you know, as well rounded as you can so that when you're looking at it it has it has a good three-dimensional shape you know you do have a little bit of the lightest lights and the darkest darks you know an equal balance so here I'm just filling back out the cheeks and the mane a little bit that cheek bugged me for a while and so I'm gonna keep messing with it black and white again just kind of peeking at it and now I'm really kind of messing with his back I don't want to get too specific with his back because I want it to be farther from our view so what I want the eye to be focused on is the face and the fluffy chest and I don't really care quite as much about the back because in real life you wouldn't be looking at necessarily the kitten in his entirety you'd be looking and focusing really probably on his face and so things that are farther away from the eye or the lens of the camera would be a little bit out of focus. I do want to make sure his back looks good so that if you do look at his back it doesn't look bad but I don't want to put the detail into his back that I'm putting into his face and things so see I'll go and I'll clean it up but I'm not gonna hyper focus on it or anything. And then what I just did here is I actually just reversed horizontally the canvas so that I could look at it. And when I did that I noticed I really didn't like the cheek placement. I felt like the head was a little lopsided and crooked and I wanted to make the head more symmetrical. So I went ahead and I kind of cleaned that up a little bit. And here I was just doing darks and now I'm doing lights. See, everything's getting a little bit brighter, just brightening it up. But the more you brighten it, the more you have to also focus where. See, I'm really only brightening the very front where the light's going to be shining. And I'm starting, I, I made my brush smaller. You can tell the brush strokes are a little smaller now. And I'm starting to actually focus on smaller clumps of fur and smaller areas. And I'm zooming in more, going in and cleaning up the face a little bit cleaning up the nose. And I actually switched to a different background color for a while. And see by seeing that I noticed that there's kind of a gap there in the ear. Flipping him back and forth helps too. But yeah, I just cleaned up that ear where that was from when I transformed it earlier. And again, I'm really focusing on getting his face more symmetrical so I kind of mess with the cheeks again here. I'm going to do that a couple of times until flipping him back and forth he looks normal. And then I'm quickly adding, he's, his head was becoming detached so I'm adding back in his little mane. You know I have to put back in some of the tones from the rest of it. But I still want his cheeks to be out and separate from his mane, so I was trying to pronounce his cheeks a little bit. I'm going ahead and putting in, you know, shadow under his chin. Making everything sit. See, I don't focus on one area for too long. I went and put the brights back in below, too. If you focus on one area too long, then that area is going to be really refined, and the rest of it's not, and it'll become more lopsided. Just going in and kind of cleaning up some of the details now. I'm not, still not like the most focused on the details, but I'm starting to try to get the edges to look a little nicer and the fur to look a little more realistic. Just going in and 
adding some more contrast to his paws. More contrast to his nose. So just ge just general to specific. Then flipping him again, <laughs> and I still don't like his cheek. So I went in and I'm adjusting his cheek again. I'm trying to get it more three-dimensional. And then I went back in and I'm cleaning up his feet a little, trying to give them more shape. I'm just adding some subtle shadows right here, just to make sure he stays pretty three-dimensional. With this style, what I'm kind of doing is working and reworking. I don't always paint this way, but this is one of the more fun sculptural ways when you don't have a specific reference. Checking him on different backgrounds, seeing how he looks black and white. Just kind of helps to just overall give him some balance. So you don't have to just do cool tones for some of the shadows either. Like in the warmer light areas, you can use warmer tones. And so I'm going through and I was just using like a pinkish orange, you know, for some of the shadow areas, especially up front, where there's going to be a much warmer light shining on him. But then I go back and I balance that out with, again, the cool tones from the side or the backlight and the shadows, and so the the sides of them I'm really pumping back out now. A bit more of a saturated color, and that's the thing too, you work from desaturated to saturated, so I can start to bring out kind of some crazy colors, some like brighter purples and brighter blues, and it should all look natural because they're all connected by those grays and those medium tones. So it really helps you to kind of go a little crazy if you can start out being pretty gentle in general with it. It's definitely not the fastest way to get a painting done or an image done, especially a digital painting. There are a lot of faster techniques, but this one I just have a lot of fun with, especially when there's not a direct reference. It's, it's just more the way I would probably paint or sculpt something, and so I really enjoy just kind of working from general to specific and just kind of slowly building it out. There's some pretty bright colors right there, some really bright tones. Just really popping some of the tips of the fur, the tips of the nose, the bridge of the nose a little bit. See, and, and when you're working with mid-tones the whole time, when you actually bring out some of these highlights in the dark areas, and it really makes them pop. And so it's really powerful and it's really easy to overdo. So it's important to always find balance with that. See, I got the much thinner brush now. I'm really getting him some actual little fur shapes now. And then, you know, checking the brightness and the contrast and what he looks like reversed. And you can paint him in reverse. It's actually a good practice to paint in reverse too because it'll just give everything a more balanced look. There, I'm again. I'm changing the cheek because 
the cheek still just doesn't seem quite right and you know I don't do anything in this mode too drastic so it's just slow changes. I decided to kind of change the top of his head and right now it's too flat so I'm going to go in and kind of round it back out a little bit. Cleaning up some of the fur. And see, I don't want the fur to be too just flat edges. It's not necessarily a cartoon. It's not a cartoony illustration, but it's not a cartoon, so I didn't want flat edges. See, I'll go back through and I'll put in a little bit of fur, but sometimes I, when I'm starting out, I go a little overboard on the fur, so I'll go ahead and clean that up. And see there, I was seeing how much highlight I actually wanted in his back. Then I flipped him back the normal way. And I'm actually again transforming just trying to get his the shape of his head the way I want and this really can be corrected early on if you spend more time on the drawing but I just wanted to jump right into painting I'd want him to kinda of have a little bit of a stylized feel I didn't want him too realistic so I didn't want to you know box myself in too hard with my drawing and so paying the price then while painting trying to make sure that his shapes you know line up realistically and here I'm actually starting to work with the special layers. I'm using the color dodge and that's for the highlights. You pick like a warm bright tone for the light and use a color dodge. And then I'll even go in and I will on a different layer uh, pick like a cool dark tone and use that on the multiply. Let's see, And when you go back and forth and do that it really accentuates the shadows and the light. So it's very powerful, it's very easy to overdo, but it also is nice because when you're using like for instance the multiply tool, it'll darken all of the colors accordingly. It won't just like apply black to them, you know, it'll coolly darken the colors and it's a very nice way to very quickly and dramatically change the lighting of your piece. And so I wait toward, till towards the end a little bit to use these tools, but they start to look pretty good. And then what you have to do too when you're merging them in Clip Studio, you have to do one at a time. So like the one closest to your paint layer, that's when you got to merge first. Because if you try to merge the two adjustment layers, what's going to end up happening is it'll just turn into the second layer. So if I tried to merge and multiply with a color dodge, it's just going to turn into a color dodge layer and all of your work that you did on the multiply is not going to be there anymore correctly. It'll turn into a color dodge. So you have to just be careful when you're merging these layers or when you're finishing your piece that you're doing it in a correct order. So it's best to only work a couple layers at a time with this and then just go ahead and merge a couple layers at a time and merge. And so I think the lighting um, gets a lot more dramatic when you start working this way. And notice too I selected the whole kitten and I'm just working again in bigger regions not worried as much about small regions because that was about lighting and here I'm still not happy with that cheek and so I tried just selecting his head. I, just, I, I made a copy of the layer so I wouldn't mess up the original and I just took his head literally chopped his head off and I'm adjusting it so that I can just get a more symmetrical look. As really that's just a drawing thing. I didn't focus enough on the drawing and I wanted to make sure that he didn't look too silly. And these actions take a lot longer to process. So now I'm just going back and forth layer by layer making sure it looks the way I want. 
I just merged them back together. I literally cut off the head of the old layer and I merged it to the new layer. And the reason I did that is it was much easier then to go ahead and clean up the lines of the neck where the head was detached. Here I'm just adding some added whiskers on their own layer and now I'm adding you know some ear fur on its own layer just giving you know kitty's ears they have a lot of longer fur in front of them so I put them on their own layer for a while just fixing the eyes making sure the highlights are more symmetrical And then right there, what I'm doing is I'm going around and giving shadow to the edges that might have a shadow from the eyelids because your eyeballs are, you know, a 3D sphere. And the same, I'm adding a little bit of highlights to the nose, but then I decided it was too much, so I really turned on the opacity on my highlight layer. And right here, I wanted to paint on the ear layer, but I accidentally painted on the fur of the ear that I just added and so I'm going I went ahead and undid that and I'm painting actually behind that layer and by doing that I can still have those be in front and kind of give it a 3D look but I can also go ahead and clean up the ears so just put that on the correct layer I noticed, you know, a little bit of area that needed some cleanup from one of the earlier transforms. I'm looking at it reversed again. And there I am cleaning up the cheek again. Just can't get that the way I want it quite. And here I noticed that I made the cheeks really prominent and the head was again starting to kind of float away from the body. And so right here I'm just kind of checking if I put in another layer of fur as if it's part of his mane attaching his head to his neck. Just kind of what that would look like. I'm turning on and off the layer a lot, changing the opacity, just making sure that I'm doing the right thing before I commit. Then I had to go ahead and quickly work from medium to dark to light and back and forth on that layer first since I didn't do it at the same time I did everything else. You know, then it's a little bit more work to make it actually fit with the rest of them. So I'm just going ahead and just pretending he's got some like little chin hairs and some little under his head hairs that are starting to kind of turn into his mane. And just to make everything fit brightening up his mane again, giving him highlights, you know, all over. You don't just stick to one area. I was pretty happy with it. Just clean it up a little bit. Cleaning up his nose a bit. Trying to give it a little bit more of a 3D feel. I'm starting to work in much darker and cooler and warmer tones. Here I'm trying to just give each toe a little bit more dimension. Kind of trying to pull his body back into the shadow a bit. Clean up his face again. And here I'm just, I just decided to go with some pretty saturated colors for the backlight. You know, I just kind of wanted some light kind of bouncing off, like he, then somewhere in the distance there's a much harder, cooler light. 
So, you know, I'll go in and I'll oversaturate it, and then I'll turn it down, and I'll just play with it, and put it, pop in some blues and some lights, and then I gotta kind of bounce them throughout the fur, because light doesn't just stay necessarily in one area. Checking them on different backgrounds to make sure everything looks okay. I noticed the feet still looked a bit weird, so I was going in and just kind of cleaning that up, cleaning up all his edges. This last part is really details and cleanup. Just making sure nothing is too out of place so that if he goes on a shirt or something, he doesn't look weird. Making sure there's nothing to clean up there, maybe a little around his ears. So any little pieces out of place other than his whiskers. I go ahead and I'm literally just selecting out the background and deleting it, but don't worry, not on the whisker layer. And I saw that those edges were a little rough, so I'm trying to make them look more fur-like. And then on different colors, I'm just double checking his back and everything, just making sure there's no pieces outside of the image, but there's also the, just the edges look good. And then here I think I'm deciding it's alright for what I want it to be. And so I literally just merged everything. I'm double checking it. I undid it really quick. And I think pretty much yeah, just cleaning up the little bit of edges, make them more believable. And, yep, that's it. So, thank you for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed this process. Uh, as I do different processes or different images, I might record a few more and just explain why I'm doing it, how I'm doing it. And it's not always, there's no one way to do anything. It's not the only way to paint, but it's just the way at this time that felt fun to me. One thing about doing it this way is that you can pretty much just keep getting more and more specific if that's what you wanted to do. I mean, there's diminishing returns, so it ends up just taking you hours to have what zoomed out looks like almost no progress so there's just a point where you just decide to stop but in that same breath it kind of is nice because you can keep going until you're happy with the piece so thanks for watching and i'll talk to you next time